Hi everyone, it's David Mood here for Studio One Expert. You all probably know that Studio One has some fantastic functions for transforming instrument tracks to audio tracks, but sometimes the rendering times can be a little bit slow. This very much depends on how much else is already going on in your song, but sometimes they can become a bit of an annoyance. Now if you are like me and waiting for tracks to render is not your favorite way of spending your time during music production, then you've come to the right place, because I've got a solution for you. Alright, but before I show you the solution, let me demonstrate the problem first. So I've got here a completed mix with already a ton of plugins loaded and a lot of automations going on. If I open the performance monitor, you can see that I have here a lot of stuff and my CPU is already sweating a little bit, around 70%. And I've got here some snare tracks, some real recorded ones, and some samples. Mm, and one of them is still an instrument track. It's not uh, transformed to audio yet. It's an instance of Easy Drummer playing one snare, nothing special. It's good practice to transform all your instrument tracks to audio tracks once you're done editing them, for several reasons, just one of them being to save CPU power. So let me go, let me switch to another song where I have nothing else, just this one track loaded. It's exactly the same snare track with one instance of Easy Drummer. And no, no plugins, nothing, no other tracks, just this one track. So let's make a right click and select Transform to Audio Track. Uh, we want to preserve the instrument track state and remove the instrument. That's the whole point of this exercise. We remove it completely from the CPU and also from the RAM. Let's hit OK. So it's around 21 times faster than real time. Thank you very much. And it's finished. We have now a pure audio track instead of an instrument track. Now let's see how long the same exercise takes in the other song where we have the exact same track, but in a complete mix with a lot of other tracks and a lot of plugins loaded. So let's do the same procedure again. Let's right click on the track, select transform to audio track, hit OK. Look what happens, 1.6 times faster than real time. What's going on? Come on Studio One, come on man, that's not even funny. Okay, let's cancel this. So let's try my special Speedy Gonzalez command. Let's hit Control T, same window, hit OK. Ooh. So it's around 15 to 16 times faster than real time. Wonderful. Now, as you could see, it was not exactly as fast as in the completely empty song before, but it was still a lot faster than our first attempt, actually around 10 times as fast, and I would say that's a huge difference. Okay, so what's going on here? Now, for some reason, I don't know if it's a bug, if it's an oversight by the Studio One developers, or if it's just a technical necessity, the way things work, but for some reason, all the plugins which you have inserted, you know, on all the tracks and also on the master bus, even though they don't influence um, the sound of the track, they don't influence the sound of the track you want to transform, they still influence the time it takes to bounce down the track. So we can speed up the rendering time a lot by switching off all the plugins, then doing the render, and then, then switching them on again. So let me quickly transform this back to an instrument track, like it was. So the instrument gets loaded, there it is, as you can see here we have Easy Drama. Let's open the mixer and you can see all the plugins are active. So what we are doing here was not possible until very recently, until the Studio One 3.3 update, where Prisonos gave us this global effects bypass button, which was one of the top feature requests for years, and now we have it in Studio One. Thank you very much, Prisonos. And this new feature now allows us to, before we render the instrument track, to switch off all plugins. As you can see, they were switched off on the individual tracks and also on my master bus. Then go to the instrument track, transform it to the audio track, and then after we're done, switch all plugins back on. Now, so that we don't have to do this process all the time manually, and also, you know, you need to remember to do it, otherwise if you start, if you start the bouncing procedure, then uh, 
it will be slow, you need to cancel it, then deactivate, and so on and so on. You get what I mean? I created a macro for this, which looks like this. If we open our macro organizer, and we have it here, transform, I call it transform instrument. It's a very simple macro, it consists of only three steps. The first one you need is the command device, activate all inserts. This turns off all inserts. Then you need the command track, transform to audio track. And then the, the same command as the first one, activate all the inserts again, which in this case uh, turns all plugins on again. And then we can of course bind this new macro to our key command. If you go to our keyboard shortcuts, we can now put transform into the search. There is our new macro, transform instrument. And as you can see, I have already assigned it to control T, which was my key command before for the normal transform instrument function. But now I assigned it to this macro. And now, of course, I can do the exact same just with this key one uh, key command. So I hit control T, then the same window comes. And you can see in the background that already all plugins got deactivated. I hit OK. Let it do the rendering. And as you can see, all plugins got switched back on, and I have here uh, my instrument track rendered to an audio track. Now, kind of obviously, the only case when you cannot use this is if you have plugins on the instrument track, which you also want to bounce down. So you can see on this track, I have two plugins. If I wanted to render them as well, then I couldn't use my macro, of course, because also these two plugins would get switched off. But I could still switch off all plugins, and switch on just these two, then do my rendering, and then finally switch everything back on. As you can see, this function is intelligent, by the way, so if you turn off everything and turn on, let's say, these two plugins, and then use this button, if you turn it on again, then only these two get turned on. So in this case, I need to turn these two off, and then I can switch everything back on again. Now you can use this same method also for if you want to render down audio tracks. So if we go, for example, to the snare chop track, this is a real recorded snare, and you can see I have three plugins on it. So if I wanted to bounce this track down to include the processing of these three plugins into the audio file, then again we have the same difference. So if I leave everything on and right click and say uh, transform to rendered audio, and hit OK. Let's check the speed, 1.6 times faster than real time. So that is not a lot. Again, this is the same speed as it would take me to mix down the whole song. So let me cancel this. And instead, let's do the same what we did before with the instrument track. Let's deactivate all plugins, then turn on just these three plugins on the track we want to render. Again, go to transform to rendered audio. Let's check the speed now. Woo! 22 times faster than real time. So that was really worth it. And it's finished. As you can see, the plugins disappeared, of course, because they are now rendered into the audio file. And now we can simply switch every plugin back on again. Now for this, I couldn't create a macro because uh, there is no command to for this, activate or deactivate all inserts on one track, or at least I haven't found one. If you find one, please tell me in the comments below the video. But until then, you can do it manually. So switch off all plugins, turn the one back on the track, uh, render the track, and then switch everything back on. It takes a little bit of time, of course, but it's still a lot, a lot faster than to wait for the track to render if all the plugins were activated. As you could see in this case, it was even almost 20 times as fast as uh, doing it without this method. So again, I don't know if this is a bug or if it's just how things work in Studio One, but I don't really care anymore since we have this global FX bypass button which enables us to do such cool things. Okay, I hope you found this helpful. If you have any comments or questions, please leave a message under the video. Thank you very much for watching. I've been David. Adios. Thank you.